Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's reign, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you govern all things, both in heaven and on earth. Mercifully hear the supplications of your people, and in our time grant us your peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, If I hear the voice of the Lord my God any more, or ever again see this great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, they are right in what they said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet who shall speak them to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the words that the prophet shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods or who presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God.
reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Now concerning food sacrificed to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge, but anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, as to the eating of foods offered to idols, we know that no idol in the world really exists and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom are all things and for whom we exist. And one Lord, Jesus Christ, through him are all things and through whom we exist. It is not everyone, however, who has this knowledge. Since some have become so accustomed to idols until now, they still think of the food they eat as food offered to an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. Food will not bring us close to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if others see you, who possess knowledge, eating in the temple of an idol, might they not, since their conscience is weak, be encouraged to the point of eating food sacrificed to idols? So by your knowledge, those weak believers for whom Christ died are destroyed. But when you thus sin against members of your family and wound their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is a cause of their falling, I will never eat meat, so that I may not cause one of them to fall. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus and his disciples went into Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, 
What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Sadducees. 
And because the priesthood was also tangled up into the Roman power structure, um, they really loved uh, Hellenization. They wanted the Jewish people to be more like the Greeks and the Romans. Uh, they didn't mind that um, you know, some of that culture was coming into the Jewish culture. And they got their, their authority from the temple rites, not from the Mosaic law, but from the rites of the temple. And like I mentioned briefly, they were in direct partnership with Rome. And Rome is the last sort of you know, large example of authority. Rome was the dominant authority of violence and oppression. You did something wrong, wrong and Rome didn't like it, you were killed. So to this world of, of authority, Jesus brings a new authority. And that authority is love. Love as a power, as a way of living, as a means of life. And I don't mean that in a Pollyanna way. But love is not a dogmatic tradition. It's not from culture and power and influence. And it's certainly not violence and submission. It's love. Earlier this week, uh, a bunch of us went down to Daily City to watch a, a feature film that at some point will be on streaming. And when it is, we'll have a screen down here. We'll, we'll set it up and we'll invite you all to a showing. <clears throat> the movie's called A Case for Love. And it features, it's an Episcopal director, and it features our beloved presiding bishop, Bishop Michael Curry. And it's a stunning piece of film that really, while it's a documentary, it, it tells many stories of many people across the country Stories of pain, of loss, of perseverance, of sharing, of serving, of healing, of being present. And all of the stories are grounded in and encompassed by love. It was entertaining. Um, it was moving. At the end of the film, I caught myself in a space where I felt like things were possible in little ways that I didn't feel so clear and certain of before. So we are called to an authority of love, an authority that is a call of responsibility to God and to others. Now don't hear what I'm not saying. Not for others, but responsibility to others. So let's talk about this Corinthians thing and not eating meat. <laughs> okay, at this day and age there were lots of religions, lots of places of worship, lots of rituals, and everybody, including, including the temple in Jerusalem, sacrificed animals to their god, and a portion of that animal would be burned or sacrificed to God, and the other portion would be given to be eaten. In, Ju in Judaism, some went to the priests, and others went to the people. So this is a common practice of honor, giving meat to a god, and then having the meat be eaten. What Paul is saying is, you know, we know that there's only one God. So it's no big deal if we eat meat to a God. It doesn't, even the God to Yahweh, the meat to Yahweh, it doesn't make mean anything. But what he says is, he says, you know, knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Earlier on in this uh, letter to the Corinthians, two chapters before, he talks about all things are lawful, but not all things are beneficial. And so what he's saying is, is that, look, you can eat meat or not eat meat, but like, if there's somebody in the community who, because this practice is widespread, and they're uncertain in their faith, and they see you eating the meat to another idol, and they think maybe you're a believer in that, and they get concerned, if they lose their way of the gospel message because of an action you were taking, maybe it's not worth that action, even if it is allowed. We are invited to think and act towards others' well-being as God thinks and acts towards our well-being. God loves us and wants us to share that love with others. So we are invited, challenged even, to use our authority for the good of another. Now, we are Episcopalians in America. So if you look at a worldview, you and I have tremendous amounts of resources uh, compared to the world levels. And even here in America, in San Francisco, you know, we're fairly privileged people of various means, some more than others. The question is, how do we use our areas of resource and influence towards love, with love, and from love, and not in dogmatic message, not in selfish wealth and power and influence, and certainly not in dominant authority? 
How do we act intentionally towards the good of others like God is doing for us? So I want to give you a, a little longer take on this same authority that I'm talking about that comes from this same letter of Paul to the Corinthians just five chapters after this one. You've heard it before. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mis ministries, mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. So throughout this film, uh, that was majority just beautiful stories of people on a journey of life and love. Interspersed through these stories were were snippets of an interview with Bishop Michael Curry and the director of the film. And it builds up to this sort of last conversation piece. And if you know Bishop Curry, he's such a joyous and wonderful um, energy of spirit. If you don't know him, if you watched Harry and Meghan's wedding in England, he was the preacher. Um, I'm going to butcher this line just enough so you get the message, but you want to come back and see the movie when we show it. So at the end of this film, they're talking about you know, is love a power worth living into? And, and he makes a point. He says, because the movie's all about, you know, specifically the, the, um, the, the, the antagonism, the anger, the, the, the separation in sort of the American culture the, uh, in our life right now. And he says, we didn't get here overnight. We're not going to get out of it overnight either. But he says, but love, love chosen one moment at a time, one minute at a time, one friendship at a time one household at a time, one job at a time, one month at a time, one lifetime at a time. Well, that'll move mountains. We are people of love. So we're invited to those places of authority and responsibility, of influence and connection, to choose love. Please stand as we reaffirm our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God.
With a new light that shines in our hearts, let us pray. We pray for your church and the visionaries who manifest your love throughout the world. May we be radiant examples of your glory in our own lives. Shine your light on your church and fill us us with your your glory. glory. We pray for all people of the world that those in authority will strive toward lasting peace and justice for all people. Fuel our passion to challenge injustice and hate and be an advocate for reconciliation. Shine your light on our world and And fill fill us with your glory. We pray for our nation, that we are agents of healing and an unyielding source of hope. We pray for those in the grips of substance abuse and the trauma of gun violence. Shine your light on this nation and And fill fill us with with your glory. We pray for those who are suffering in ways that are known or hidden to us and struggle mightily in this life. We pray especially for the people in war-torn lands in which gnawing anxiety arises each dawn and is the sad rhythm of their daily lives. We pray for others who have asked for our prayers, including David, Raleigh, Kim, Margaret, Pamela, Judith, Rulock, Joe, Veronica, Martin, Ilya, Mike, Trenton, Kenneth, Vicky, the Echeverria family, Anne, Bruce, Johan, and those you would name aloud or in your hearts. Mari. Shine your light into the passages of our lives and fill us with your glory. We pray for those who have been called into larger life with you, especially George Secor, Lorraine Marie Hahn, Mike Lucy, Janet Bryan, Carol Guatkin, the very Reverend Dr. Alan Jones, Lila Echeverria, Mike Mason, Louise Harris, Dr. Lindley Dodson, and those you would name aloud or in your hearts. John. Shine your perpetual light upon them and fill us with your glory. We give thanks for your radiance of love that is reflected within our own faith community and the countless graces that illuminate our lives. Shine your light on all your creation and fill us with your glory. God of radiant light, your love illumines our hopes before we know them and our needs before we ask. Kindle your flame within us that in our prayers and service, we may know your transforming presence at work in the world around us. All this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of our Savior, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. The peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. You may greet one another with a sign of God's peace. Good morning. 
Uh, please have a seat for just a few minutes for uh, some announcements and a welcome. We're so glad that you are here worshiping with us this morning. And I see some folks in their like 49ers colors. So <laughs> um, we're praying before the game. If you are new or joining us for the first time or visiting, we'd love if you filled out a welcome card, either in the pews or they're on the welcome table outside in the courtyard and join us for our coffee and fellowship after the service. A few really exciting things coming up on this Friday. We will be joining with our partners at a Congregation Sheriff Israel for a refugee Shabbat. And all of us are invited. Uh, that's through our, our NEAT, our refugee accompaniment team. Next Sunday, listen carefully, because we will have two services, one at 8 and one at 10. Uh, and we don't want you to miss our worship and only show up for the meeting. But we will have our annual parish meeting right after that 10 o'clock service and then a lunch after the meeting. So I hope you will join us for some of that. And then later that afternoon at 3 o'clock will be our candlelight concert uh, with the Bird Ensemble. More information in the bulletin. And then we've got a whole series of things as we prepare to move into the Lenten season. Uh, first, we get to party before we fast. So we'll have our Shrove Sunday pancake breakfast on Sunday the 11th in between the 9 o'clock and the 11 o'clock services. And then our young professionals will be meeting for a Mardi Gras themed happy hour on uh, that Tuesday, February 13th. More information in the bulletin. And we've got some Lenten resources for you. Uh, in back there in the narthex, uh, a devotional booklet from Living Well Through Lent from Living Compass. And then, um, you know, these are for families, but if you don't have kids at home, you can still take one with you if you enjoy coloring um, or just this kind of this vibe for your Lent. Um, so pick one or both of those up to take home with you as we prepare to observe Lent. Also, save the date for our annual parish retreat, May 17th through 19th. Even if you can only make it up there for this Saturday up at Bishop's Ranch in Healdsburg, I hope you will join us. It is a wonderful time and a great way to get to know other folks in the congregation. Now, as we turn to this table, a reminder that it is not my table or St. Mary's table or the table of the Episcopal Church, but it is Christ's table, and he sets it for all who hunger and thirst for him. Now let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. Because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh. For in these last days you sent Jesus to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In Christ you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In Christ you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember Christ's death, we proclaim Christ's resurrection. We await Christ's coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Savior of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, through whom we are acceptable to you, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with Mary, the Christ-bearer, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your children, through Jesus Christ, our Savior, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
please stand for our post-communion prayer. Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another. You have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light to the world, and the blessing of God Almighty Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen.